students in previous video we studied all the terms which has been involved in thermodynamics and conditions again i tell you whenever you learn any physical chemistry chapters first you revise the entire topics in physical chemistry atomic structure chemical bonding and uh, mole concept and all the states of matter solid liquid gas then come to thermodynamics i told you thermodynamics uses to find out whether the process is spontaneous or non spontaneous and equilibrium is to find out the extent of the reaction and kinetics is to find out the speed of the reaction now we'll come to thermodynamics so in thermodynamics i told you you'll be having questions only from this four topics so be more specific and get prepared conceptually understand this four topics and try to understand what are the list of formulas is there in four topics and start solving mcq now after completing all the terms and conditions now you'll be knowing what is open system closed system isolated system and all the process and all the properties and functions and you'll know what are the signs to be used now directly we are going for first law of thermodynamics and in first law of thermodynamics these are the two tools which we are going to use it mainly one is internal energy in some textbooks it will be given as delta u in some textbooks they'll mention as delta e it is at constant volume qv that is its representation so don't forget students delta u at constant volume and delta h we'll call it as enthalpy heat content that is at constant pressure these are the two tools which we are going to use it now i'm going to derive this law of conservation of energy first law of thermodynamics del u is equal to q plus w now you just take a system and uh, you now consider the system the energy of this system will take it as u1 the energy of the system will consider as u1 and i'm going to give you q amount of heat to the system so plus q already i told you plus means heat is given to the system and i'm going to do w amount of work on the system now my energy of the system will change to u2 now u2 minus u1 will be equal to q plus w so del u will become q plus w this is first law of thermodynamics law of conservation of energy energy can neither be created nor be destroyed but it can be converted from one form to another form don't forget delta u means at constant volume qv if it is constant pressure qp then i'm going to use delta h enthalpy tool now i'm how i am going to do it the same thing q is equal to delta u minus w and since it is going to be qp i'm going to write it as delta h so delta h is equal to delta u already you know that w is equal to minus p del v last video we have explained this w is equal to minus p del v so it will be plus p delta v since pv is equal to nrt so i can rearrange this formula as delta h is equal to delta u plus delta ng rt delta ng stands for number of gas products minus number of gas reactant students don't forget this or the very important formula one is delta u is equal to q plus w very important formula and i already taught you how to calculate work done under isothermal reversible and irreversible and delta h and this is very important formula to calculate enthalpy now what is heat capacity see this symbol now after completing delta u and delta h now we are going for heat capacity actually in heat capacity c c you are having c heat capacity cm molar heat capacity and c a specific heat capacity actually what is heat capacity heat capacity explains the amount of temperature which we have to given to the system to increase the temperature of the system by 1 degree celsius so generally will be represented by c is equal to q by t again i'll tell you heat capacity is defined as the amount of energy which you have to give it the amount of energy which you have to give it to increase the temperature of the system by 1 degree celsius if it is going to be at constant volume then i'll call it as cv is equal to qv by del t if it is at constant pressure i'll call it as cp is equal to qp by del t del t then for number of moles i can rearrange this formula as qv is equal to n cv del t and qp is equal to ncp del t and qv is nothing but i told you constant volume means internal energy so del u is equal to ncv del t and del h that is qp is equal to ncp del t 
Now, these are the list of formulas you have to remember. Don't forget. So, already I told you four topics. First topic is questions based on the terms system, open system, closed system, isolated system, and all the process and all the properties. And you have to know the conditions. And uh, second type of questions will come from first law of thermodynamics that is nothing but internal energy, enthalpy, and heat capacity. And uh, internal energy del u is equal to q plus w and enthalpy formula is delta h is equal to delta u plus delta ngrt and heat capacity is c is equal to q by del t at constant volume we will call it as cv is equal to qv by del t at constant pressure we will call it as cp is equal to qp by del t and i rearrange the formula i will get del h is equal to ncv del t and del h is equal to ncp del t this rule actually we will call it as mayer's rule cp minus cv is equal to r you know what is r r is gans constant it values can be 0.0821 liter ATM per Kelvin per mole or you know all those units R can be written as 8.314 Joule per Kelvin per mole this is R value and uh, this you have to know this is Poisson's ratio we will call this nu is equal to Cp by Cv already you know what is Cp and you know what is Cv and don't forget students Cp will be greater than Cv as I told you Mayer's rule is Cp minus Cv is equal to R. Yeah, right? Fine. Super. So, for monoatomic, if it is monoatomic, Cv value will be 3 by 2 R. Note down, this is very important. If it is Cb, it will be 5 by 2 R. It will be 5 by 2 R. Its new value will be 1.67. If it is diatomic, it will be 5 by 2 R. Cv and Cp will be 7 by 2 R and this will be 1.4. If it is polyatomic, Cv will be 3 R, Cp will be 4 R and U will be 1.33. This is second type of question. Third type of questions, you will be getting it from second law of thermodynamics. Okay, the most important thing is entropy. Already you know what entropy is randomness or disorderliness. It has been introduced in second law of thermodynamics and in first law of thermodynamics we had certain limitations. What is the limitation? First law says that energy can neither be converted, energy can neither be created nor be destroyed but it can be converted from one form to another form. But it doesn't explain the direction and second most important thing is in first law of thermodynamics they said it can be converted okay but second law proves that it is not it can be converted but not 100 percentage please note that point that is very important it is impossible to construct an engine which gives 100 percentage efficiency is the most important core of second law of thermodynamics in that we are going to study delta s is equal to q reversible by t and the most important formula is delta g is equal to delta h minus t delta s even this formula comes from first law of thermodynamics let me say delta u is equal to q plus w and w i am going to have two types of work then w expansion and w non expansion w non expansion is your useful energy i will call it as delta g and w expansion will be minus p del v now if you substitute all those things w as delta g so delta g is equal to you will be getting p del v plus del u will be delta h since you know that delta s is equal to q by t so q will be equal to t delta s so minus t delta s this is one more important formula students now we don't have much time to explain all those formulas so i'm giving only the list of formulas which we are going to use it so second law of thermodynamics one is entropy that is delta s is equal to q reversible by t and delta g is equal to delta h minus t delta s and this formula is somewhat important formula which connects equilibrium constant kc and kp equilibrium constant with delta g delta g is equal to delta g naught plus 2.303 rt log kc these are the list of formulas you have to remember in thermodynamics so again I am saying in first law of thermodynamics you are going to remember about delta u is equal to q plus w first law of thermodynamics and enthalpy what is the difference between internal energy and enthalpy this is that constant volume this is that constant pressure you have to remember this in, in competitive examination they will ask you to calculate internal energy or enthalpy at constant volume enthalpy at constant pressure so use this formulas if it is heat capacity has been mentioned then go for this formulas and you know cp minus cv difference will be r and i have given the poisson's ratio 
and in second law of thermodynamics mostly questions will be coming from entropy and Gibbs free energy so delta S is equal to Q reversible by T and uh, I just want to mention here one more thing is we will call a Troughton's rule Troughton's rule the same formula only delta S is equal to Q by T if it is Q P I will mention delta S is equal to delta H by T if I say delta S vaporization then to calculate this will be vaporization if it I say delta S fusion delta S fusion is equal to delta H fusion by temperature is it clear and try to remember this formula delta G is equal to delta H minus T delta S and uh, the formula which relates Gibbs free energy and equilibrium constant last I just want to summarize few concepts and uh, directly we can go for solving some MCQ questions okay what is the use of thermodynamics to find out whether the process is spontaneous or non spontaneous so these tools finally will tell us this process is spontaneous suppose if I say delta G is negative this says that the reaction is spontaneous in the forward direction if it is more negative obviously it will be more spontaneous in the okay forward direction if I say delta G is equal to positive it is non spontaneous if I say delta G is equal to 0 then it will be attaining equilibrium this is the use of thermodynamics so you take any equation to if you want to check whether the reaction is spontaneous or non-spontaneous find out their delta G values if it is negative it will be spontaneous in the forward direction if it is positive non-spontaneous if delta G is equal to 0 the reaction has been attained equilibrium thank you students